What's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode. Back to back. We're shooting a back to back episode this weekend. Since wala naman tayong <laughs> jump pack this Sunday. Jump pack yung games kahapon, jump pack din yung episodes natin. So, I don't know when you'll see this, but definitely before the Wednesday game, no. Uh today we're going to do something different. Gab, take us through what we're going to do today. Uh, today I'm going to give my top 5 MVP candidate so far after three games in the UAAP season. Uh, so just to prepare everyone, this is not the usual stats-based <clears throat> MVP that the UAAP you typically uh, puts out there. This is our own MVP, the Boleros MVP. Uh, we're taking into account everything: stats, the narrative, team performance. The eye test, how they look on the court. Um, the interviews are are, are they essentially a, a positive to their team? How are they in the locker room and all that? So, not your typical uh, UAAP MVP race. This is our own MVP race, and it'll be interesting to see at the end of the season if our picks align <laughs> with the picks of the UAAP. So, let's see. Um, Is it time to present? Are you guys ready? Let's go. Game na. Let's go. Let's Ipanami go. Ipanami right. by the way. All right. So yeah. I want to give a shout out also. I want to give a shout out first to my fiance, Ia, who uh, made these slides. She had a lot of fun. Too much fun doing these slides. So <laughs> please forgive me if you see a lot of my face here. Because... because <laughs> She had too much. First time na namin to makita to our viewers. This is number one. Sa my yeah. first time. So, yeah. Oh shit. Sh- Ayan nga. Ayan nga. Ayan nga. nga. Gusto pa natin to makita. So this is Polo Gab's top five, not just stats MVP candidates for season 86. Nao magagalit di to yes. ang sandogang. Magagalit di to ang sandogang. <laughs> I wanted down below. it sandog, Approve but. Pa kayo dito? <laughs> Ayaw ng fiancé. Ayaw ng fiancé ng Sando Gab. Ayaw ng fiancé ko na Sando Gab. Polo Gab, Gab. <laughs> Polo Gab daw. Gusto niya Polo Gab. So, I had no choice in the matter. These are our prenup photos. I'm sorry. So, yeah, these are my top five, not just stats, MVP candidates so far for season 86. Yes, look at that handsome face. Look at that. <laughs> so, well, let's start at number one. Let's start at number ma- one. Mag- because... Unsubscribe nito, Gab. <laughs> ma- maraming mag-unsubscribe. <laughs> so, I'm, go- I'm starting at number one because I think this is, my opinion, the, the, the most unanimous. So, at number one, I'm gonna pick Malik Diouf as the top MVP candidate. He's been my top MVP candidate since the preseason, since the end of season 85. And let me just run you down his numbers for the first three games. Against Adamson, 20 points, 17 rebounds, 4 block shots. Against UE, 19 points, 16 rebounds, 2 steals, and 3 blocks. Wild. Uh, against NU, perhaps his worst game, he had 12 points and 13 rebounds, and only 1 block, and he is hella efficient. Uh, his lowest field goal percentage was 62.5% against NU. Uh, he's he's shooting near. He's only missed one free throw so far this season. So that's rare for a center, a big man, an FSA to shoot that well from the free throw line. And his uh, box plus minus plus 29, plus 24, and plus 21. Uh, I don't think you'll have any. How you can, can you uh, argue? How every can you argue? Are 20. there any arguments? Every game plus 20. <laughs> Are there any arguments? Without even looking at any other stat that justifies Balik Diouf as the clear front runner, I agree, Gab, for the MVP race. I I, I, I agree and I think I agree and I think hindi lang siya sa not just stats. I, kung tingnan mo lang siya sa stats, clearly siya ang number one sa MVP. Like, uh, We all predicted him to be the one well, day, but 
unanimously ay <laughs> hindi pala hindi but Gavin I predicted him to be our MVP contender he's proving us right Baliw it's too easy for him again for yep, me too easy and he's the anchor of the UP defense they're number one they're undefeated because he's so good on defense he covers everything for this UP team so rightfully so he passes everything I test stats narrative it's all him Malik Juf. Mababa minutes niyan. Mababa minutes niyan. Mababa minutes niyan. Yes. Yan. Which was my concern. I do want to shout out the minutes. Yeah, which is my concern <laughs> when we were talking about MVP candidates. Maybe Malik will lack minutes to rack up stats, but no. He's just which, dominant. Exactly. Yeah. His per minute stats siguro mawi. You know, Or even know. more crazier Grabe. probably than any player. Yep. Yep. Okay, my, my number two. I let's see how you react to this. My number two is Francis Lopez of the UP Fighting Maroons. Let me run you down the numbers. Uh, in the first game versus Adamson, he had five points, 13 rebounds, three assists, one steal, and one block. Was not that efficient, only 33% from the field, and one of two at the free throw line. But he was a plus 29 against Adamson. Against UE, again. Numbers, uh, not so impressive. Only had nine points, had three rebounds, two assists, one steal and two blocks, 50% from the field, and was one of two from the free throw line. But he was a plus 16. Against NU, arguably his biggest game, 14 points, seven rebounds, four assists, two steals, one block, 66% from the field. Only two of five from the free throw line. Maybe that's one area he can improve on. But he was a whopping plus 34. Clearly turned the game around in the third in the second half. He's part of UP, the undefeated team. The they've won by double digits in every single game. I think it's warranted that uh Francis Lopez will be at number two. One of our UP subscribers did say that it's possible he will be a rookie MVP. Not far off, but being a teammate of Malik Juf is kind of a problem. But my number two is Francis Lopez. Reactions. Two of you. Yeah, uh, I think Sam. Let's go with you. Or again, okay, go Maui. Go Maui. I think him being the teammate of Malik Dio disqualifies him to 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 be an MVP candidate. Uh, yun lang. But I think yung very underrated yung contributions to Francis Lopez. We talk about Kagulangan. We talk about Dio as being the top point guard and center. We mentioned, I mentioned in the previous episode that LeBron Lopez has an argument to be the top wing player uh, for this season. And Chigang clearly, clearly manifest that uh, as LeBron Lopez is his second in the MVP candidates. Uh, but this is like Durant and uh, Westbrook for me. If Durant is the leading MVP candidate, I can't put Francis Lopez uh, as the second in the MVP race. Uh, I think this is much like yung so you AP may discrepancy sa stats si fourth he was second uh, last year Kwame and him shouldn't be in the top 5 for me uh an MVP has to stand out uh it's the most valuable player for a team in a field of 7 teams so he has to stand out to be the MVP and i think Malik Diouf without a doubt has stood out uh i'm curious to see uh, with the UP's next 11 games, kung kamusta yung numbers ni Lopez without Diouf. Because we see Lopez usually playing with Diouf. So maybe yung plus minus niya can also be uh, elevated because he always plays with Diouf since he starts. But yeah, uh, good point, I, good point, I, I, I don't want to disregard yung, yung, yung contributions ni Lopez. By far, he has surprised me uh, as... One of the top players this season. He what uh you cousin Coin I was talking yesterday. Uh what Kobe Paras should have been is Francis Lopez now for UP, in our opinion. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Sammy. Point. And I think you agree someone with commented. I think someone commented something like that. Na parang Francis Lopez is like the like the better version of Kobe Paras for UP. Um can't remember who. Uh, I do agree. Uh, if we're talking about not just stats, diba? Uh number number one, I think when people hear the name Francis Lopez or pag makita nila na pumasok na si Francis Lopez sa UP, 
they they always get excited kasi you're expecting a lot of highlight plays mawi ko nagsabi nito you expect a lot of highlight plays on both ends ha he can he can fly high for a block and then run down the court for a dunk i don't have the stats with me but i feel like in every game he's played he's had a, at least one dunk highlight dunk um, <laughs> yes. first basket na the reality i think dunk eh. dunk eh, no <laughs> um, another thing that uh, and he really makes it exciting diba lalo na pag open court fast break just I know stay away from Francis Lopez kung ayaw mo ma-posterize but another thing that I do want to say just to add uh, last year coming from last year's team they lost Zave Lucero and Carl Tamayo and I think it's very 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 hard to fill that hole and Francis Lopez has filled that hole so far, I think. Um, yeah. You still have JD Kagulan, you still have Malik Diouf, but it was very important for UP to have gotten Francis Lopez from Ateneo. Imagine if wala yes. si Francis Lopez sa team yeah. na to, may malaking butas ang UP. So far, we no expect Belmonte and Torpulas and the other long, lanky athletic players of UP to perform also, but I think kulog sa langit talaga na Francis Lopez. Yan yung biggest Jones. question natin, di ba? During the end of the season, Tamayo and Lucero's void. Correct. I think ang he's perfect ko, for the yeah, UP team. Yeah, oh, yeah I think, just to add lang, Gab, I think ang question ko right now is, I'm thinking, I'm not sure, I'm, I'm thinking lang. Uh, you mentioned a commenter who mentioned that he could be a Rookie of the Year MVP candidate. But is he eligible to be the Rookie of the Year? Kasi di ba may rule lang UAAP that you have to be straight from high school. So, not sure if he's eligible for Rookie of the Year. Maybe oh, si- yung... similar to Kevin Chambao, kahit, kahit may age na. This is technically re- really his freshman year naman in college. Oh, so, I mean, he, he should he be didn't eligible. Go, he didn't play anywhere. Yes. Yeah. He's, he, he's technically straight out of high school. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know if, that, if that's a loophole or you in the rule, but for me, I, I'm I'm counting him as a rookie. So, I, feel, I think he can... He, he's a rookie MVP candidate, if that makes sense. Uh, I'm interesting like Francis Lopez is the stats don't support him being at number two because there are other players in this list and in the UAP who have better stats than Francis Lopez. But this is something that when you watch the UP games, you can see they play the best when Francis Lopez is on the court. He's so with, important to the team. He's so important. His athleticism is so um, intimidating to other teams. He once he's downhill, uh, going downhill, attacking the basket, he's scary. I, uh, it, op- opposing big men are scared to see him go down. You either have to foul him or just um, send him to the free throw line or just give up a basket. He's exactly like LeBron. He he lives up to his nickname, no? LeBron. One Lopez. and done. So, um, Let's go one and done. <laughs> no, no, no. But on, on, a se- on a serious note, most likely, with the way he's playing, he's definitely a one and done candidate. Yep. Okay. So, Maui mentioned that you won't have Francis Lobos at number two. So, I'll run down my list and I'm interested to see who you have at number two. So, let's go back to that later. So, for my number three, Third on my MVP candidate rankings, I have Precious Momoe from UE. Uh, UE has surprised us this season, so I'll quickly run down the enormous numbers of of uh, Precious Momoe. Precious USD, 17 points, 15 rebounds, 3 steals, and 4 blocks. Was horrible from the free throw line. Was 9 of 18 from the free throw line. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> amazing big man numbers there. Against UP, had 12 points. Again, was inefficient. Only 25% from the field. And 6 out of 16 from the free throw line. Uh, but, but he had 22 rebounds. Had 1 steal and 2 blocks. Whereas FEU yesterday, 15 points, 17 rebounds. Three steals. Unfortunately, no blocks. Again, was inefficient. 37% from the field and 6 out of 10 from the free throw line. But you have to give it to him. He racks up the numbers and he's pretty important to UE. And UE is winning. That's the surprising and is winning. 
I think for me, he's number three on this list. You might make an argument for an, his teammate. I, I'm, interested, I'm interested to see or I'm interested to hear uh, your thoughts on this. Precious Momoe as my third uh, candidate. Ma, uh, let's go Sam first. Sam, let's go with Sam first. Uh, oy. Again, I just focus on yung not just stats MVP. To be clear to everyone, hindi tayo based dun sa statistical points lang. And I have to say, uh, definitely Momoe deserves to be here. Uh, actually, now that I think about it, bak toss up siya sa between Lopez and Precious Momoe. I would even rank him higher. Uh, just because Ooh. we expected UE to just be a one-man team na si Remogat lang and then maybe si sino yun yung original import nila. Delvion Jackson. It didn't look De- bad. Del- Delvion Jackson. Delvion Jackson. Delvion Jackson. It, it, I, it, it didn't look good. No? Nung, nung preseason, parang, parang hindi tayo impressed. That's why we ranked them so low. And they have been very good so far this season. A pleasant surprise. And I think a big factor of that is Precious Momoe. You've talk, we've talked about him. You've talked about the stats gap. So, uh, maybe Malik Diouf obviously has better stats. He's a better FSA. But when we talk about how important he is to the team, I don't know where UE would be without this guy if they had Delvion Jackson instead of him. So just with that, I think definitely deserves to be high up there on the MVP list. So far, leading this team to a 2-1. Yeah, so far. So far. Okay, yeah, Maui. Uh, yeah, I think... If there's a person that can steal the MVP award this season from Malik Diouf, it's probably Precious Momoe. Even with Gab's not stats MVP candidates or the UAAP's, I don't want to say stupid, but crazy formula, uh, Precious Momoe will probably be on the top top list uh, in the MVP rankings. I mean, this guy gets... Uh, probably averages close to more than 15 rebounds a game, a couple of steals, blocks, uh, a lot of points. Uh, the formula clearly does not take into account also masyado yung efficiency. So him not shooting yep. free throws well, him not shooting field goals well, doesn't matter. But uh, even if you, you put inside yung, yung efficiency, I think he has proven yung, yung value niya. When we talk about MVP, it's about value. Not about the stats you put up. You can put up uh, uh, meaningless stats. At the end of the day, the MVP has to be a person that the team cannot live with. And I think that's evident with what Coach Jack has been preaching during the first three games of of UE. Precious Momoe has been a godsend for them. Uh, And them having a 2-1 record uh, makes his case better. If they make it to the Final Four, I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up being the MVP for this season. So, bagay, if you're a UP fan, you would want another person to win the MVP because the MVP award has a curse. Diba? Whoever wins the MVP <laughs> does not win the championship. So, yeah, I think Momoe has a big, as much a big chance as Dio has. Especially if you... Would you be the same as... Would you agree with Sammy that you would put them ahead of Francis Lopez? You said a, a, a while ago yes. that Francis Lopez yes, would Yes, definitely. Be, you would? Okay. But but he's not okay. my second. I, let's see who, who are your other people. Okay, Baka, see, but see, then see. yung second right, okay. candidate mo. Okay. For my fourth MVP candidate for after three games of season 86, I'm going to go with KQ. Yan. Kevin. Kevin Kiambao. Has yeah. been beasting in season eighty six. Let me run down the numbers for you, for you guys. Since you know, it's not just stats, but we love stats. Against FEU in the opening game, he had fourteen points and fourteen rebounds, three assists, one block, one three. It's a bit inefficient. Forty percent from the field was three of seven from the line, but it was a plus sixteen and led Lasalle to an opening day win against FEU versus Ateneo. Monster numbers, 17 points, 14 rebounds, 7 assists, 1 steal, 2 blocks, and 4 three-pointers. A bit inefficient again, a 37.5% from the field. 1 of 2 from the line. Uh, was a minus 2, but you can give him that. Uh, I mean, he played almost the entire game. And lastly, again, yesterday against UST, it was a blowout. He didn't play much. 
but he still ended up with 14 points, four rebounds, only one assist, uh, two steals, a block, three three pointers. Again, inefficient at 33 percent from the field, perfect from the line, three out of three, and but was a plus 21 when he was on the court. Uh, Sammy, you love KQ, you look like KQ. Uh, <laughs> so I have him at number four. Do you agree with this spot? Sana sing galing ko rin siya, no? Tsaka sana mga 6, 8, 6, 9 din ako. Uh, I think he sh- I think he should be number two. So, I-, I think KQ should be number Ooh. two here. Very, very crucial for Lasal. So, obviously, the stats can back this up. Definitely MVP contender. But, um, just like Francis Lopez, I think KQ is a type of player that could be done after this season. Despite only playing his second uh, year eligibility, he's not good. He's not See good. You, he's not talented. See you, KBL. Diba, Maui? Pinag-usapan na natin. Definitely, okay. definitely. So, I think KQ will dominate this season. And I think we haven't seen the best of KQ. Feel ko nga sa ngayon, you mentioned it, Gab. Sometimes he has been inefficient. Sometimes he falls in love too much with the three-point shot. It has been an improved three-point shot. He's been better there, pero I feel like he shoots too many sometimes. So I'm, I'm yep. expecting him to improve, and I feel like at the end of the season, KQ has to be up there in the top two, definitely. I didn't also take uh, put here his turnovers. I think it'll make him look really bad, but he does turn the ball over a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so that's one of the, the knocks against him. Maui, yeah, uh, we were talking about who's my number two. Uh, I gotta say it's KQ, my number two MVP candidate so far for the first three games. Uh, the eye test just proves it. Uh, if you saw KQ two summers ago, you wouldn't believe where he is right now. Uh, this guy was just shooting floaters and was an energy guy who could really pass well. The KQ we see now is a KQ is transitioning into a shooting guard small forward slot. He's now an improved three-point shooter. He has a very good... Actually, yung most impressive sa akin, yung stop and pop niya from the top of the key or from the wing... Uh, KQ, as, as Coach Stab mentioned, Ke- Kevin Chambao has improved leaps and bounds. Uh, this is a guy who is a hard worker. Uh, I'm impressed. Uh, yung concern ko talaga sa kanya when I watched him first sa Gilas is how can he make it to the pros, not just here in the Philippines. Because he was playing five during that time. Uh, KQ... If he improves his lateral quickness, if he starts to defend uh, guards and improves his ball handling skills, this guy has a huge ceiling uh, if he continues to improve, which he, he has proven. He has shown a grabbing improvement from year to year. And yeah, uh, so far, Lasal has been competitive. Uh, even if Lasal struggles, I think KQ will rack up numbers definitely this season. He is their most important player for me, even above Evan Nelly uh, this season. Uh, I think Kevin Kiam- how Kevin Kiambao plays will determine where Lasal ends up. Because si Evan Nelly naman is, will always be that stable, consistent guy. But Kevin Kiambao, if he continues to ball out, definitely Lasal will... will uh, will go leaps and bounds. Then they'll go a long way. I think the main reason that they really won that game against Lasal is KQ picking up his fourth, fourth foul from a technical foul on third quarter. Had he not picked up that fourth foul, it might have been a different story. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Um, I can get with that. I, I kind of agree with that. Uh, my thing lang is I didn't want to put Francis Lopez at three or four because... I've seen how important he is to UP. And I've seen how UP dominates when whenever he comes Ito. in. And UP has yeah. just, just looked too, too good. So I put Francis Lopez at two. But I couldn't are but I can easily put Kevin Kiambao or Francis Mom away here. My thing along with uh, Kevin Kiambao, I don't agree, Maui, that he's more important than Evanelli, though. I think 
still Evanelle is the most important Lasal player. He's he's the en- he's the engine that runs the car. Uh, Kevin Kimbao Siguro is one of the sub drivers or whatever. But si Evanelle parin para sa akin. But they're both very important to Lasal naman. So let's move on. Let you let's move on to my number five. My number five for uh, this ranking has to be Ray Rimogat of UE. Now, I debated a lot between putting Ray Rimogat or Evanelle here. Uh, they both had soup, a bit similar numbers, but I'm going to give the bump to Rimogat just because of the importance that he has to this UE team and how this UE team has surprised us so far after three games. The numbers kind of fell off after his 21 points and 10 assists and three <clears throat> steals in the first game. Uh, in the second game against UP, still impressive. 13 points, 8 rebounds for a guard. 7 assists, uh, but struggled from the field at 38.5% and was overall a minus 4. 14. Just couldn't get it going against uh, UP. Against FEU, again, the numbers went down a bit, but still with 8 points, 4 rebounds, 4 assists, 1 steal, and 2 blocks. I didn't want to punch in 2 blocks nga against FEU. <laughs> Probably but strips. Again, yep. Uh, inefficient from the field at 33%, but 4 out of 5 from the line, and didn't hit a- any threes during that game. But uh, I put Remogat here. Uh, I think he's rejuvenized this U- UE community and this UE team just by the way he plays, just by how flashy and how uh, ju- just a guy you want to follow and revolve things around. Uh, I was happy to see a big UE crowd yesterday cheering this team on. And I think Ray Remogat has proven that the two games last season, at the end of the season, were no fluke. He's still the most important player in this in this UE team. I won't be surprised if he gets into the mythical five. Uh, your thoughts? Do you agree or do you disagree? Uh, let's go with Maui first. Maui. Yeah, uh, I think it helps also that Paul Lee is now an assistant coach for UE, which is why these guard players, wing players, are really stepping up. Uh but yeah, uh, we I'm very high on Ray Rimogat, uh, but but if I were to put Ray Rimogat, I'd probably consider also a number of names. Uh, I'd, I'd probably, con- like you, Gab, I would consider si Evan Nelly. Uh, the reason why I rank KQ higher than Evan Nelly is because I think KQ is their ceiling racer, and I think si Evan Nelly is their floor racer. So if... Evan Nelly will always be consistent. Uh, si Kevin Kiambao has the tendency to be erratic, sometimes bad when he when he forces up shots. Uh, but yeah, uh, I think Reno Mogat is a good choice for number five. Some other players that I would probably consider because just because I don't want two UE players in the top five since they're not really still considered a top championship contender. Probably si Kian Baklan or si Cedric Manzano is our players that that I can also consider as part of the top five. But but yeah, uh, if you watch our previous episodes, kita naman yung how, how hype I am with Rumogat. Uh, I think this guy is for real. Uh, we I also love that he is the lone point guard, the lone minion to make it to the top five MVP of Gab. Uh, but yeah. Uh, it would probably be hard for him to win MVP with Moboe there, uh, similar to how Francis Lopez will have a hard time winning MVP with Diof in the fold. Uh, but if you talk about uh, top point guards, definitely Ray Romogat is on, on the top of the list. Uh, probably arguable if he or Evanelli is more valuable or more consistent. But this guy is some somebody who I'm hoping to see in the UAP shine more. Uh, but maybe he leaves early too. I mean, KBL loves small guards, loves recruiting small guards that are undergra- under undergraduate. So maybe we see Romogat not finishing 
is five years with UE. The main thing about Limogat that really is uh, special for me is that he, he was a walk-on sa UP, UE team. Uh, that's crazy. Given the craziness of all the recruitment, this guy is a walk, was a walk-on and he's now probably the star of the team. Uh, yeah. I agree. Ray Limogat should be part of any MVP conversations given how UES performed during their first three now, games. Now, uh, Given numbers, uh, there's one other guard actually who has, I think, the, the, the best numbers out of all the guards. It's Nick Cabanero. He's been racking up yeah. all the stats for UST, Sorry. but we can't put Nick Cabanero Sorry here. Come to on, say there's me. zero and three. Yeah, there's zero and three. Sorry so to say there's no way I, yung, I'm putting Nick Cabanero here. Sami? Uh, I get why you put Ray Remogat. I. First thing that came to mind for me was Evanele also. But I think Maui made a good point. I think uh, someone from NU or Adamson deserves also to be here given their standing so far. <clears throat> We're talking about the first three games. I I think for coming from the previous episode, maganda yung point mo, Maui. Baby boy should be here just because we nobody expected Adamson to be this good. Baka the stats aren't there to support Baby Boy being in the top five. I think he's the most consistent then been... sa Adamson sa first three games. Yes. Just he's been the most important player sa Adamson and has kept Adamson alive so far in the first three games. So, good point from Maui. I'd say I'd push for Baby Boy para dito sa number five. Tsaka, sorry, Gab, last, last comment. Baka mabaliw yung ano natin, eh, viewers natin for... Go, 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 go. I Baluwai I mentioned is part of the MVP race. So should be part of the MVP race. <laughs> you were never going to say, no, 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 no. I have I have to say it lang. I have to say it lang. We're looking at the first three games. I mean, if Ateneo won against Adamson, it could have been a different story. But uh just a caveat, uh, this is this is the first three games. So most of the players you would see should the MVP should always be from the top teams. So we from did a not include yes. from a winning team. <laughs> so the reason why Balungay probably is not here, I don't know if Gab would have considered him at Ateneo one, but the reason why I, I agree that Balungay should not be here is the same reason why I agree Nick Cabanero should not be here. You should not put an MVP yeah. candidate from a losing team. You know the reason kung bakit galit din kami sa current format because some of the players are considered top MVP candidates but they don't win. Diba? Yep, exactly. Uh, yeah, you can make a lot of arguments for number five here, but um, I I went with Remogat. I think the 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 importance that he has in the team and in the community just just uh, it's just so o- overwhelming that I put yeah. him here at at you at number five. But I wouldn't be angry if you put Manzano or Nelly here. You guys make great arguments. The thing along with Alexi Baklaan, I don't think he's wrapped up enough stats. Uh, if you look at, if you compare his stats to Rimogats or mm-hmm. Neles, it's malayo. He hasn't, he hasn't really um, scored a lot. So, but he has wrapped, games. He has games oh, where he has a lot of rebounds and assists. Parang may nine rebounds yeah, seven assists game yata siya. Yeah. It's also a, a victim of Coach Jeff Napa's style, no? Um, yeah. Coach yeah. Jeff Napa likes to run a very deep rotation. They love to share the ball. They they love moving it around, sharing the ball. Mm-hmm. So an equal opportunity offense. So it's kind of hard to then to get your stats up if you're from NU. But uh, you know, Kim Baklan is just as important to to NU as Evanelli is important to Lasal or as Sayri Mogat is important to UE. So Definitely. yeah, I agree with that. You know, but the stats for I looked at the NU player stats. Eh, hindi consistent. Eh. <laughs> the yeah. NU players' stats are just not high enough to to warrant a place in here. E- even though it's a not just stats MVP candidate, their their stats are just not high. It enough. still Sorry. matters. Yeah, it still matters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Diba? So actually, actually, nung nahit nung linabas mo si Remo, gat, Gab, the first thing I did was like I looked at the NU games and the NU stats because. I really wanted to put an NU player here. I th- still believe they're the number two team right now. Pero wala talaga eh. and tama kayo. I think it's part of Jeff Napa's system then. 
Uh, so, to the NU fans, we're not saying na, oh, walang MVP, walang magaling from NU. It's really just that everyone's contributing. It's a balanced effort. Uh, yun. I think, good point. <coughs> the same thing happened in the past also to Ateneo teams, di ba? Uh, undefeated sila for one season, pero none of their players were in the eh. top five. In, di ba? The Chabio was MVP never season, but thirty was never considered as yeah. part of the MVP candidates, diba? Don't you think that's yeah. that speaks volumes? So it's yep. like that in yep, NU. Exactly. It's a balance attack. Yep, exactly. So this NU team, they play together, they share the ball, and that's the reason why you know they don't rack up as much stats. But that's it. That's my list. Uh, to our subscribers, to our followers. Tell me, yung tell us if you uh, if you agree with this list. Who who you who would you have? Do you disagree with the placing? Is there someone that we didn't talk about who you think we should talk about? So let us know. Sam, why, why don't you sign us off? Okay, that's it for today's episode. Those are your initial MVP candidates, not just stats MVP candidates. Uh, for the first three games, we'll try to do it. Again, sometime later after a couple of games para mas updated na yung stats natin and yung performances ng players. And then we'll talk about Wednesday's game next. So looking forward to the games on Wednesday. Stay tuned for that episode. Apat na naman. If you haven't yet, <laughs> apat na naman, jump pack okay. na naman tayo. Apat so if na you haven't oh, games on Wednesday. subscribed yet, make sure to subscribe para you get updated on the latest episodes. Don't forget to share, like, and comment also. That's it for today's episode. See you. Bye-bye.